everybody welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio for those that don't know my name's Nicole and today we are here for um, a, like a floss tube book tube type thing so today's video is a stitch with me and it's where I talk about the books that I've read um, we have three weeks worth of books to get through so if you're new here welcome thank you so much for popping by to see what my channel is all about we are a multi-craft channel and I do lots of different things from stitch with me to sewing tutorials uh, quilt alongs and all that sort of stuff and along with uh, floss tube which is all about my cross stitch diamond painting as well and if you're a returning subscriber hi guys I've missed you welcome back a for another break I took yes I know um, I was just feeling a little bit burnt out and so I took some time for myself so thank you for um, all the concerned emails and messages and and all the rest of it I am fine and yes I have been taking care of myself I just needed to to take a bit of a break to to catch up on a few things around the house and with the family and stuff like that all right so as you can see i'm actually doing something a little bit different today i'm actually doing an embroidery and i hope i pronounced the lady's name right but her name is diana vinget i think or vinget um if i N-G-E-R-T, Vingert, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but anyway, she has a channel um, here, and it's under that name, Diana, um, V-I-N-G-E-R-T, is how you spell her name, embroider, if you put that in, it will come up, and she has an Etsy store where you can buy these patterns, so, um, yeah, and I've been doing these for a while now, I'm actually doing a couple of drawings for myself to, um, you know, to do as well so, so just some different flowers from here in Australia and stuff like that so anyway this one um, I'm sorry I cannot remember the name of it and it doesn't actually have it on any on here but I think it's um, eucalyptus and oh I can't think of it but it's got the eucalyptus in it so because these are eucalyptus leaves so so basically um, and eucalyptus flowers so if you uh, search on her Etsy store or even on her um, YouTube you'll probably find it and then you'll find the link to her Etsy store so you get with the pattern you get um, the color chart which has the the DMC that she uses and then there's um, how to do it a little uh, booklet I think there's about five pages six pages in it on how to do the embroidery and um, it's a very simple pattern um, basically and then you've just got two sizes that you can trace out with this one one was a 10 inch and one was 11 inch so because um, you you basically do it in the hoop and you finish it in the hoop so where it's sitting right now is where it's going to stay so this is how much i've done so far um i've i've done one other i've done one other one of hers which um i'll just grab okay this is the other one that i've done of hers it's only a small one that's what i started with um i love it i think it's absolutely beautiful and basically all i've done is just finished it with a bit of cardboard it's got a bit of blue tack because i sent it up behind me you've probably seen it in my floss tubes and whatnot so yeah so basically her videos don't have any talking instructions it's just basically watching what she's doing and um you can get an idea of what how to do it um basically they she uses full strands sometimes she uses 12 strands so it does use a lot of floss um, I have been using a combination between Cosmo DMC and CXC because um, that's what I had here this one here is entirely CXC um, so the colors are very similar to they color match pretty spot like maybe a shade lighter from the DMC so that's why I use the CXC because it's a lot cheaper um, if I remember I will put a link down below where you can get that from what shop I get it from because a couple of people have actually asked me it has a bit of a sheen on it this one here is got all three in it so it has uh, this is a the CXC number which is 3022 which is very close to the color um, I think I brought it up to show you okay so that's the DMC and that's the CXC so you can see there they're very close in color so I can alternate between the two the only thing I will say is that the CXC has a little bit more of a sheen on it than what the DMC does so you can see that it's just a slight shade um, not even it wouldn't even be a full shade lighter it's about half a shade um, but it's so close that I um, 
it's it's a much of a muchness really uh, for the white I'm actually using Cosmo 100 because I didn't have any DMC or CXC white um, at the time of starting this so I'm using the 100 now DMC, uh, DMC has two whites they have a 2500 and then they have a blank um, CXC has a one which is the 2500 uh, they don't have the other the white other white that DMC has but Cosmo actually has three shades of white they have their uh, 2500 which is a really bright vibrant white then they've got a 500 which is brighter than the 100 um, so and you can't really notice the difference if they were on their own but sit them side by side and they're just shades different a little bit different so that's why I like to use the uh, Cosmo because the simple fact is that I get a variant in the whites um, and it helps with the different um, different fabrics that I use for cross stitch and stuff like that so sometimes it'll say DMC 2500 um, and the Cosmo 2500 is actually a little bit um, more vibrant and I think it's from the sheen um, that's just my experience. That's how I see it. Someone else probably doesn't see it that way. My eyesight's not the best, but anyway, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But I find that it just looks a little bit brighter than the DMC. So I tend to use, um, in most of my charts, I tend to use the um, Cosmo whites and I'll just um, adjust it accordingly to, to the pattern. Okay, some of the other colours that we'll be using in here... Um, maybe not today but we'll get to it so we've got our green for our leaves there we've got a, a 645 which is a gray which is for these berries i believe um and then we have a um a 772 and that goes behind uh for these leaves here for the gum leaves and then we've got the pink now i just with the pinks um this is a cxc which is the um three six eight nine you can see that it's a little bit of a different pink and i'm thinking that i didn't actually use this color i think i used the um no i didn't even use that one i've got a couple of em empty spools here maybe that's the color i've used the two one one no it's like a peachy color that I've used and I can't seem to see it here so I may have used it all but I'm going to throw in this pink anyway because I mean flowers are a different color so it makes no difference at all really you can just use whatever colors um, and then we've got for inside our uh, larger flowers we've got our 413 so they are the colors that we're going to be using today they they are quite nice colors um, I am actually going to be working on the um, the larger flower over here, which is in the white. It'll be done exactly the same as this one here. Hopefully I can remember how to do it <laughs> without looking at the video. Um, but I thought I'd get this. I'd, I need to get it finished. I, this shouldn't have been hanging around as long as it has been. So I am using a uh, chenille needle today. It's got a larger eye uh, size. I cannot tell you what size that is because I have no idea. Basically, I have none whatsoever. So as I said, uh, these actually use the full strand of, um, so you don't actually separate your strands. And you don't also, if you're doing it as well, just um, a, a bit of a tip, you don't want it super long either. And we tie knots in the bottom of our um, threads as well. Now, did I bring my scissors? It doesn't look like I have. Where are they? All right, now. That's always the way. Always forget to put something out. Oh, here they are in the drawer. All right. I actually put them away. <laughs> First time for everything. All right. So it has been a hectic couple of weeks. Even though I took time off, I still was quite busy. If you're over in my handmade group, you know I've been making a lot of bags um, and just getting stuck into that. All right. So um, basically we've cut off a, a length of... Um, floss and we've tied an, a knot into the end of it and then we've got to thread our needle and this is the fun part this is the part I always fail at and I don't think I have my needle threader out here either oh no it was easy, a bit easier all right and so basically I've been making a lot of bags and all that sort of stuff um doing a bit of organizing because as you can imagine it gets quite messy here at times and um yeah <laughs> all right so basically i'm just going to start on the inside here 
and we're just going to fill in the petals um, with like a satin stitch so basically that's my first one and then I just basically come up next to it I try not to um, waste too much thread on the back when I first started doing it I was just sort of looping it and um, yeah so I've changed the technique and how I do it and that is actually saving me some um, some floss so wherever I go down I come up beside it try not to um, let it knot up on the back I find this very relaxing this form of embroidery because I don't have to um, fight with the floss <laughs> I don't have to um, I just cut a strand and I just start stitching in some cases she does actually fold it over and use 12 strands um, in some places oh, that might be another one there's another lady that that does it as well um, But yeah, I like um, just sometimes the strands separate as well, which gets a bit annoying. So, what has been happening in the last three weeks? All right, I had a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff's been going on as I said I've been making bags I've been um, sorting out uh, zipper pulls and stuff like that so all my stuff that I've been making and creating and and whatnot are over in the um, DD's handmade bags and more um, group you're more than welcome to come over and join that group uh, we would love to see you over there um, I've got some more bags going up at the moment we are in full swing of Christmas all things Christmas so we have a lot of stuff going um, into the group pretty much on a daily basis except for on weekends I tend not to put anything on the weekends um, you know everyone needs time off and all the rest of it I have been reading like nothing else in the last three weeks I have read 13 books now for those that are new here basically what happens on a um, on a Monday is I put up my video and I do a stitch with me whether usually cross stitch but I thought I'd get this done today and I talk about the books that I've read now um, I know that a lot of you who come and visit me every week and so you already know this information but this is for the new people that are here so basically today is like a booktube so um, I don't know if you've watched booktubes or, or anything like that I do it a little bit different so basically what I'm doing is I'm just um, talking about the books that I have read and um, giving my opinion I'm not really doing spoilers or anything like that um, it's just yeah it's just basically my take on it I um, was the reason I started talking about it is because it is actually linked to my uh, cross stitch and it was a challenge that I um, started doing um, at the beginning of the year which was to read a hundred books so the challenge was ten genres um, Yeah, ten, pick, they gave you a whole list of different genres. So pick 10 genres and read 10 books from that, that genre. genre. Um, I selected my books and then basically totally went off my list and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, so here we are. I'm still reading books for that challenge. Um, and I'm still putting them into the group and all the rest of it. because so I was going to do stitching and and whatnot this year with that particular group but with everything that happened at the beginning of the year I just didn't feel up to doing any of the challenge groups so I pretty much dropped out of everything except for um except for that that one challenge so I've been listing up all the books that I've been reading and, and um in that challenge and so we're coming down to the wire I am up to book 90 I'm currently reading book 91 um which I won't discuss today until I'm finished it so um yeah so that's that was basically the challenge and I will in my own group I also have a uh, bingo challenge going um where I, we roll the dice each week and then we have a book that we read in that week so sometimes this week it was a short story um, a, 
I think we've had uh, read a book with a blue cover and um, a new genre to you, things like that. So um, I'm actually going to do them again next year. So there will be four of those because they run for 12 weeks. And um, yeah, so basically that's sort of where I'm at with with that sort of stuff. Um, so that's still all happening. And I must admit, I'm thoroughly enjoying myself playing along with that. And so is a few other people. They've um, said to me that they've, um, they're enjoying it. And um, yeah, so that is why I talk about books on my um, Stitch With Me. Now, it's only relatively new um, that I decided to do that, uh, basically because, you know, not a great deal was happening in my life. Um, and all that sort of stuff so that is why I thought you know what I'm going to talk about the books that I've read because that is a big part of my life at the moment um, so to meet my target for the hundred books I needed to read um, two books a week I pretty much going to pass that target because as I said um, as of last I think Friday so three or four days ago I was at 90 books and I'm currently reading actually I'm actually currently reading book 91 and 92 I'm trying to read Emma <laughs> and that's hard work but um, I haven't been on since the 26th of October and so I haven't talked about any of the books that um, I've read so as I said I have read 13 some of them are the horror classics as well um, because it, during the month of um, October I was reading the um, the horror classics so I had a couple more I think I had the I think last time I spoke to you guys I was still had um, Joe Hill's book and I think it's Nos uh, Nosva R2 I think is how you pronounce it it's N-O-S-F-A-2 I don't know how to pronounce it I'm hopeless with that sort of stuff but I think that's what you say it means in vampire in German I think um, so yeah that's by Joe Hill and for those that don't know who Joe Hill is Joe Hill is uh, Stephen King's son that's his pen name um, we have a couple of bingo ones that I have read so we'll talk about those and um, I'm continuing on with my Virgin River and my, um, oh, what is it, the Je Jesse Hunt series. So we're continuing on with that as well for November as well. And um, then, as I said, I've got a couple of the, the um, bingo ones. And then I've just got some that I just wanted to read for no other reason because I wanted to read them. All right. So... Um, yeah, and that is why I'm talking about books today. A few people, before I get into talking about the books and all the rest of it, a few people have actually asked me what my plans are for next year. Um, and seeing we are coming down to the business end of things, I thought I would um, talk a little bit about that today. So basically, um, I have been getting the... I didn't know what I wanted to read next year, so I just took the... Um, guesswork out of it and um, I went shopping on the book grocer and I have managed to get quite a number of um, number of books through their book boxes so if you've been around for a while you know that I've done an unboxing I think of two I've actually got a couple extra um, Savannah thought they were great so I got her the um, advent cal calendar which I have as well so I've got another I think there's 24 books in that and they're all wrapped up and I'm going to do um, a unwrapping each day during the month of December so um, I will incorporate it won't be all stitch with me's uh, there'll be quite a few stitch with me's but they won't all be stitch with me's some of them will be um, sewing tutorials and stuff like that and I'll just incorporate that into the video and um, yeah so I'm, I'm still working on how I'm going to format it so I can still keep up with my regular scheduling um, that I have so sewing tutorials and all that so a lot of the books that I'm going to read next year are going to be out of this um, out of these boxes 
am I going to be crazy enough to do 100 books again? I don't know whether I'm going to set my goal that high because um, it's quite a commitment. That's two books a week. Personally, I can read two books a week. Not a problem. Um, as long as my family doesn't have to eat. <laughs> But I'm going. I think I'm going to set my goal at around 80. Um, if I go over that, that's fine. If I stay under that, that's fine too. If I hit it, that's fantastic. But I have really, really, really enjoyed um, reading the books. Now, for those that are new here, I do um, Kindle, I do physical, and I do audio. And in some cases, I do both physical and audio. So. It just depends if I can find them or not. Uh, just bear with me while I load up my needle and tie another knot. So basically, um, what I'm thinking is I'm going to be... I've got... What have I got so far? So I've opened two and they had 17 and 18 in it. And then there's 24... So that's 60 books. 59, 60 books that I have already. And I ordered a box for Savannah the other day, and so um, I got another two boxes. One was a craft box, so I'm not really going to be reading those as such. And some of those will be giveaways. And then I got another, I think it was another, I um, can't remember what it was, whether it was... think I think I might have got a romance box I can't remember now um, I haven't opened it yet it has arrived and it's just sitting there so I'm going to do an unboxing um, so to speak oh, it gets a bit tough sometimes going through you can lock up your knots and yeah there we go all right so yeah so basically um, I think I've got all together just under 80 or just over 80 books and then um, there's the advent like as i said the advent one has got 24 in it um so that's going to give me a lot of books to read so some of them i will read physically some of them i'll do both audio and um physical so i'm pretty pretty sure that i will get to about 80 books i'm gonna promise anything but yeah i'll give it a go all right um, so that's sort of the plan at this point and obviously there's going to be other books that I'm going to um, come across and want to read and, and all that sort of stuff so um, yeah they'll, they will come into it as well as you can see to get it to, to flow around you sort of got to go on top of it as well with this um, stitching um, it doesn't look like much when you're doing it it looks like a, a shambles until you finish it and then it looks so pretty um, I just love it. I think it's a great way to do embroidery, um, not having to split the threads and all the rest of it. So I've just gone off on a tangent there. We were talking about books. Yeah, so that's sort of my, my plan um, for next year. I think I will just, what I've got on my shelf um, from those boxes, and of course I'm probably going to still get a box, maybe one or two boxes next year. I'm pretty sure I got a romance one. I'm not 100% sure of that because I, I ordered it when I was talking to Savannah and I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I know that I, I so far I've ordered two crime and thriller. I'm really, really getting into the crime psychological thriller ones. So I'm hoping that um, from what I've seen so far, there's some pretty good books in there. And I'm going to, obviously, I've got the bingo challenges that I'm going to be doing as well next year. So they'll um, help tie in as uh, into it as well. Now, I don't tend to pick my books just on those um, bingo challenges either that we've been doing. So they are extra books that I will read during that, that month or that week. Um, so, yeah, so basically, and I've still got, I've got a few... Um, audio books and, and series that I'm reading as well on that. So let's talk a little bit about what I have been doing in the last three weeks. As I said, 13 books. I have a new series that I've started um, by Blake Pierce. Now, Blake Pierce is the author of the Jess, Jessie Hunt series that I'm um, reading. She is a... Um, criminal profiler so like serial killers and all that sort of stuff 
and um, yeah so basically I'm still reading her I think I'm up to book nine or ten in that I'm still reading the Virgin River series I'm up to book 14 15 in that one um, and as I said I just started reading a new series which I am not reading anymore and I found them all as audiobooks over on Scribe now these series is where there's 18 19 books in them I'm doing them all on audio I originally found a um, Blake Pierce on Kindle and um, I think at one stage there his first book in the Jess Hunt series was actually um, free so one of the uh, one of uh, my viewers actually and a group member uh, Chrissy said that she found it for free on Kindle now I'm just going to turn this a little bit without undoing it all I'll just turn the frame um, yeah so basically I found this it's it's the basically with um, Blake Pierce he's just hunt one is the perfect affair the perfect this the perfect that okay so that is how he sort of set up his series now the um the other series that i found of his um is left to die and left to run i've read the first two books um so there it's the left to um left to fear left to this left to that and um it is about a fbi agent that is a working for um is it interpol yeah interpol so she um works between three countries um or any country now but when she when you were first introduced to um and i think her name is adele sharp um when when she when you were first introduced to her she um was in the US it was called to, to France and uh, subsequently ended up in Germany and it's just basically catching serial killers and um, yeah and going from there all right so I can trim that off now but because I've locked that off with that other thread yeah so I've got that series and there's quite a few in that one as well um, I don't mind his writing like a few a few people have said that um, you know like he's predictable rah 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 and all the rest of it yeah you know but it's for me I'm using those ser those um, particular series as um, as a productivity tool really because basically what I do is I just um, they're on audio and I found a lot of them through Scribe um, which means I only pay eight ninety nine dollars um, a month and that's all I pay. They're included in my subscription. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I found a lot of them on there. A couple I've had to get on Audible because I haven't been able to find them. But to buy those books, I would be looking at a small fortune. So basically listening to them on Scribe or Audible, saving me a fair amount of money and... Um, I'm I'm really enjoying it because as I said I'm using them as like a um a productivity tool because um I just put the the little earbud in and then I just get on with the business of sewing and cutting and quilting and all the things that I've got to do and the earbuds connected to my phone so if the phone rings I don't have to chase it or anything like that I can just um enter the phone and continue on with the story as soon as it's finished so that's why I sort of really really like that sort of stuff um, with audio so as I said I'll be doing the these most of these were audio there was a couple that were um, physical books and um, yeah so I'm going to switch over to my voiceover and we're going to talk about um, all the books that I have read I'm not going to go into a huge amount of depth of each book because the simple fact is that we will be here for a very long time otherwise um, so yeah we won't do that all right so I'm going to start with the series that I'm reading so that's Virgin River and the Jesse Hunt and I've also got a new series that I've just started as well so the first one that I'm going to talk about is book six um, it's called The Perfect Look. It is the Jesse Hunt series. For those that don't know, Jesse Hunt um, series is she is a criminal profiler. So basically, it is a, a I guess, suspense thriller. 
genre <laughs> you would call it but anyway it is um written by Blake Pierce and um there's uh, these books only have about 200 pages in them so they're really just to me they're just a short story so um in this particular series the Jesse Hunt series there is actually um 19 like when you look it up it actually says 19 although I don't think uh issue I mean book 18 and 19 are published yet so they seem to be published every couple of months um this one was published back in 2020 um i think it was march 2020 book six was um yeah because book seven was published in may so around every two months these books have been coming out so basically we're following along with the story again of jesse hunt um and basically uh, in this particular book it is a man it starts off the story starts off with um a man's found dead in a hotel room um, after spending a night with a prostitute and no one really seems to care um, that much, although Jessie um, sort of starts looking at it a little bit further as she does in all her other books and subsequently finds a pattern. Turns out that the prostitute um, come from an abuse back abusive background and really has it in for men and um, so she is basically killing them. Um, which is sort of, you cotton onto that very early on into the book. Like, that's not really a spoiler. It, it is basically on the um, the blurb of the book as well. It says very much the same thing. The subplot in it is Crutchfield. Now, Crutchfield has been in the, the book since the beginning. Um, and so it's a, it's a pretty weak subplot um, as far as the books go. I found it just to be very, very weak. It wasn't... I, I thought it could have that they could have, he could have done better. Um, so anyway, basically, um, I can't really say too much about that without giving too much away. So I'm just going to leave it at that. The subplot there is of um, Crutchfield. He's been into it from the beginning. Um, some of you might remember who have been here for the book tubes that um, Crutchfield is an escaped um, prisoner from the unrehabilitated. Um, prison so there was this prison um that he escaped from where all the inmates are basically can't be re rehabilitated they're just yeah they're a little bit nutso and um they're serial killers you know worst of the worst basically and so yeah so there's a little bit of a subplot there with that happening um as I said, didn't really float my boat, but I can't say much more than that. Other than that, that the story is that the character of Jessie is developing further, and um, also her sisters um, now come into to the books as well, and so her character is now in the process of being developed as well. So, um, as far as as uh, star rating goes, solid three. Um, that I love these books because I, as I've said in the past, I like to use them for. Um, like productivity so I just stick these on and put the earbuds in and get it stuck into work and before I know it the work day's over I've listened to, to one or two books um, I usually polish these off in about four or five hours so that's a good you know good four or five hours of sewing or um, prepping or, or stuff like that especially when I'm cutting and stuff like that I usually like to have these books going in my ears because they're not hard books to keep a track of and that's why I like them so moving on to book seven, um, The Perfect Affair. This was published in May 2020 and it has 207 pages. As I said, most of the books um, from the Jesse Hunt um, are around that 195 to 210 in pages. So again, we start a story off where someone is found dead um, and then Jesse and Ryan um, are in this one together. I, was, I just... The, there's a Jesse and Ryan thing happening there. It is, is, are they going to, are they getting serious? It's like a to and fro and it pulls you in, it pulls you out. Like you just get, I'm getting a little bit frustrated with it. I wish they would just get together um, and be done with it. But anyway, um, in book seven, we have a porn star is found dead by her friend. Um, and... Um, the police are really like rushing through like the, the it begins with you know her found dead and then um, 
Jesse and Ryan were in the area, so they turn up at the crime scene and the, the body's already been bagged and tagged and moved and, and all that sort of stuff. So there's a little bit of, like, rushing through. The lead detective isn't there and they're not supposed to do anything like that until the lead detective has been there and gone over the crime scene and, and stuff like that. Um, both Ryan and Jesse feel that this is a little bit weird and um, so they ask a few few questions and all the rest of it, you know, and the story goes on from there. Uh, it turns out that the, the porn star was actually a young girl. She was underage and it just follows that storyline of finding out what happened to her and why it happened and all the rest of it. There's a few twists and turns. Um, but, yeah, it just, um, you know, like... They want to keep it under wraps and then so um, and they don't want Jesse or Ryan on the case. They're trying to keep them off it, but subsequently they keep investigating it and then they find out why. And um, so it takes those twists and turns, as I said. Um, I actually really enjoyed this book, book seven. Um, it was really fast paced, moved at a really good pace. Um, I got a lot of cutting done <laughs> for my week ahead um, after reading this one. So, yeah, it has a subplot of um, Jesse's sister being taken to counselling and um, Jessie worrying that she may be a, um, have some serious um, issues and stuff like that. So um, that is, I can't really talk too much about that subplot because that will give a lot of the story away. But yeah, there is a developing story there. So hopefully when we move into to book eight, we'll get a little bit more closure on, on that, that subplot or a, a little bit more development um, on that. So I'm looking, really looking forward to, to book um, eight, which I have already in my um, Goodreads. So if you want to find out what books I'm reading this week, you can go over to my Goodreads and I have um, currently reading. So all the books that I plan to read this week and sometimes they'll bleed over into the following week like Emma is. Um, Emma's been in there for nearly three weeks now and oh, it's hard going, I'm telling you. But yeah, you can find out all the books that I'm going to be reading this week. All right, so st while still on um, Blake Pierce, he I have actually picked up another one of his series and it's the um, Left to Die is the uh, first book. So it's um, the... Adele Sharp series, um, or the Left 2 series, as I like to call it. Excuse me while I just have a drink. Um, yeah, so basically I came across these in Scribe when I was um, looking for the the uh, Jesse Hunt series. Again, this is an FBI agent um well, Jesse Hunt. I don't, I don't think she. No, I don't think she is an FBI agent. She just. She's done some training at FBI, uh, at the F, FBI ground somewhere, and um. But this one is. Um, I'm just going to call it the Left Two because every book starts with the first one is Left to Die, the next one is Left to Run, Left to Fear, all that. So, um, again, they are around the 200 pages. Um. This one was published in April of 2020. Uh, book one, we're introduced to Adele Sharp. She's an FBI special agent. She has French and German um, heritage and she was raised in the USA. Um, she is the lucky person to have a triple citizenship. So she has a German uh, citizenship, French and also a US one. Um, this makes her quite valuable to the Bureau and basically it sees her following, so the first book is um, she's on the hunt for a serial killer, um, he's been have at it in the USA and over three different states and it's just gone really cold and then suddenly there's a murder over in uh, France I think it was I don't, didn't write that down um, I think it was in France or Germany and she finds her uh, was sorry it was in um, Paris the in France in France so basically um, she finds herself back in Paris and because um, she had lived in Paris when she was younger and um, before going to the US and so she finds herself back there working with an old partner and all the rest of it and basically it just follows the um, hit because there's been a killing and it, it's very reminiscent of the ones that have happened in the US so basically she heads over there long story short she ends up working the case and basically she's approached by um is it interpol yeah interpol and basically she ends up working for interpol as well as uh, while in the u.s she's still working for the fbi but she will be called out for global um events basically any murders or anything like that so 
Um, yeah, so that's sort of where that went. It was pretty fast paced. It was more just learning about her and her background and everything. It didn't really focus. It did focus, but not a great deal on the killer. Just it was sort of like the subplot. It was more about learning about Adele. So that was Left to Die. As I said, it was published in April of 2020 and it had 212 pages. And again, this one is actually on an audio book. So all my series, because there's so many books, I mean, the Virgin River book has got 18 in it I think um this one I'm not sure how many is in the left two series but there's a fair few I think um I counted seven so far seven or eight and it's still there's still more coming um the Jesse Hunt is up to 19 so I'm basically listening to these through Scribe um and Audible mostly through Scribe because all of the Blake Pierce ones are on Scribe I've ke I keep finding them on there um not all of the Virgin River ones are on Scribe though so in book two we are um it's called Left to Run again it's the Adele Sharp it was May 2020 and 207 pages so in this one um it's sort of it's a little bit of still getting to know Adele and um her background and stuff like that so her mother was killed when she was younger and she's still obsessed about finding her mother's killer um because from what i can gather they never found the killer um so basically this one is, she is thinking about that but she's also um working a case where she has to uh find a killer that is actually targeting um american expat women for their kidneys so um yeah, the characters are starting to develop. There's some, you know, some angst from a previous partner um, in it and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next one, although I don't think I'm going to pick these up before the, the new year um, because I do have a few books still on my bookshelf that I want to get finish. Um, as I said earlier, I'm up to book 90. I'm currently reading book 91 and 92 because I'm reading two books at the same time. One's an audio and one's a physical book. And so, yeah, so basically, um, I don't think I'm going to pick these up before the end of the year, but I've started the series. I'm looking forward to, to getting to know um, the character Adele a little bit better and see where they're going, where he's going to take this story. So, um, again, it's it's quick. It's it's fast paced. They're, they're short books. They're not long. I can just get in, get stuck, get into stuck into work and listening to the audio books. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying them. I've had a few questions from people um, about the audio books, like where to find them and stuff like that. I had a, a couple of mess private messages and, a, and an email as well. So um, hopefully you're watching today and you'll hear this. Um, I've already answered this in, in your messages and, and whatnot. But I get my audiobooks from two places. One is Audible and the other one is Scribe. Audible I pay $16.45 uh, a month and I have um, access to um, their is it premium collection or something so they I don't pay any extra for those books but if I want to I read a book I have to buy the book for $14.95 sometimes you can't find the book on there and you go find it on Google and it's like $32 for the audio um, and a lot of the time I get my audio audio through Audible I actually buy it through Kindle because sometimes you get really good specials through there so like you'll buy a book from Kindle and you might be able to pick up the audio book for two dollars 45 extra so um i sometimes do that as well i just shop the specials it can you can get caught out so if you do see a book that you want um for instance uh one of the books that i've read i'm going to talk about a bit later a curse so dark and, um and lonely i could buy that in um in kindle for 12.99 but it was still um 12.99 for the audiobook so I didn't worry about that um, I, ha I ended up subsequently I ended up having the physical book because I picked it up for 10 bucks um, so it was cheaper again so um, and then I found um, that there was another two books in that series I didn't really look any further it was just I heard it was a good book and all the rest of it and there's a couple of extra books in that but we'll talk about that a bit later all right, so the next one, um, yeah, so basically that's where I get all my audiobooks from, sorry. And um, 
I find that the easiest way. Now, Scribe is the best value for money, but you don't find all the audiobooks on there. It's a little bit hard. You've got to search for them and all that sort of stuff. So basically, with Scribe, I pay $8.99 US a month, which I think turns out to be about $11 Australian. And I don't have to buy any more books. But Scribe is not just audiobooks. It is also documents. It's it's actual books, uh, like Kindle books as well. Um, there's ebooks on there and then there's your audios as well. So I do a search through there and that's where I find them. And if I can't find it on audio, uh, Audible or on, um, on Scribe, then I just don't worry about it. I will just read the book. I will get it through Kindle or whatever. All right, so that's where I get my audios from. Another question that I often get is how do I listen to them? People can't stand listening to them. Um, I have touched on this before. I actually speed my books up. So a five-hour book, for instance, or the, the Jesse Hunt ones, I think they're about a seven-hour book. I generally knock them over in about three and a half to five hours, depending on the um, person that's reading the book because some – read them faster than others there's two um, narrators on the on that series and one of them actually reads faster than the other one on normal speed so the the faster reader I only speed that up to I think 1.5 1.4 around that um, and then the other one I speed up to a 1.6 1.7 shoot because she's a little bit of a slower reader and because I read fast anyway and that's how I get through my audiobooks other than that if I listen to them at normal speed I go to sleep. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to Virgin River. Um, I'm up to I'm up to about book 13, but I in the last couple of weeks I have read book 11 and 12. So the first one that we're going to cover is book 11. It is Promise Canyon, 342 pages, published in 2010. Um, and as I said, it is book 12. So the story um, is still continuing on. So we've still got all our um, characters that have been throughout the series. So we've got, you know, Mel, Jack, Pre all those people are still in it um, not heavily involved in this one there's just a few little subplots that are going on um, so we we are introduced to Colin uh, Roy uh, is it Royden yeah Royden um, so he has a this is one of the subplots he has a um, he is a Black Hawk helicopter pilot and he has a, a really bad crash and subsequently end, ends up in hospital so that takes all the Roydens out of the picture and they're all focusing on him there's a little bit more to that subplot but I don't want to give too much away the other one is that um, Jack is now having to handle the the town's new fortune that the town has inherited from one of the um, characters that has passed away and I'm not going to say who it is because you will be devastated when you find out who it is so anyway um basically the main st and so he's struggling with that so he's struggling to know what to spend the money on and all the rest of it he looks to the town and it goes from there so they are the two subplots that are happening in the book uh there was an I think was it this one there was a character introduced as well I think he's I think it was this one or maybe the last one Denny um, is going to be popping up a little bit more in in the next couple in this and the next next book so this story actually follows um, a story of Clay and Lily so Clay Tahoma is working for the local um, equestrian vet uh, equine vet not equestrian <laughs> wrong word <laughs> equine vet and um so he's working um with him and he is a little bit of a horse whisperer so he um is navajo as well and um so he basically has this connection with horses and all the rest of it so it's very heavily centered around horses this story and um and all that that brings with it and there's also the other character that is in it um lily she is a hopi um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so, and she hasn't had much luck in love and all the rest of it. She had a very traumatic, traumatic relationship when she was younger and subsequently it makes her distrusting and all of that sort of stuff. So basically it follows their story. Um, she's a little bit, you know, reluctant to... Um, you know, even though there was that connection with Clay and she thought he was really sexy and all the rest of it, she's very reluctant to get into a relationship um, with him or anyone else for that matter. So basically, um, it just follows their story and um, 
they basically, yeah, it just goes on for a little while about different things. Um, as I said, he's a bit of a horse whisperer, but she also has a bit of an ability to um, to work with horses and and um, also humans. <laughs> she can pick up on, on what they're feeling and stuff like that. So um, it's not psychic stuff or anything. It was just, yeah, it was just that they're very in tune with one another and, and all that sort of stuff. And so it just follows their story. Um, they have, they did pop up, well, um, Clay popped up in, in book, uh, 12, so we're moving on to book 12 now, which is called Wild Man Creek. There wasn't really a lot to book 11, it was just, a, um, basically heavily focused on them, um, her distrust and all the rest of it, and him subsequently, um, winning her over. There's a few other things that I could talk about, but it would give away the book. And I don't want to give away the book in case someone is still reading the books. And I don't want to wreck it for you, basically. I wouldn't like you wrecking it for me, so I don't want to wreck it for you. So anyway, we're moving on to book 12. Wild Man Creek is the uh, name of that one. It was published in 2011. It has 361 pages. And this one follows on from book... Um, 11 on the Colin Royden um, story so he's now got his he's now come heavily as all the other Royden brothers have come into to the books and all the rest of it again he has been burnt um, when he was younger with relationships and all the rest of it like the rest of the Royden brothers very reluctant to get into a relationship or anything like that so it's following his story after his helicopter crash and now he's in Virgin River recuperating so um, he had burns and he has a crook leg and a crook arm and stuff like that. So he is really still mending and trying to, to get back to where he was. He is feeling very um, upset and frustrated because he can't fly anymore and all that sort of stuff. And so he is throwing himself into his painting and trying to just calm himself and until he knows what he's going to do next um so basically that's his side of the story the other character which is a female character is jill she is a former pr executive of a software company and uh, she ends up in virgin river because she ends up um taking what do they call it is it a sabbatical when they're asked to just take some time off because there's something else going on. Anyway, she's. Ta I'm going to go with sabbatical. She she's taking a forced sabbatical, um, and that is because she was burnt by a former boyfriend, um, and she broke up with him in a very humiliating way. And um, he pretty much took her for a ride, and and basically, it didn't end very well, so to speak. So. She's in Virgin River and she's trying her hand at organic gardening. She's in a house that she's seen. She was she was mentioned um, in the previous book. Uh, she ended up at um, an open house. They were having like a garage sale and her her two friends and her sister turned up at this house and it reminded them of her grandmother's house. So she, she's gone to Virgin River to suss out this house and subsequently she's rented it off Jack. Um, it is part of the town's inheritance as well. So they're looking to, they've, they've done it up and they're looking to sell it. Subsequently, I can say this because I, it's not really a big part of it, but subsequently she she's on there and she's trying to do the organic gardening and she's growing rare herbs and all that sort of stuff for um, gourmet restaurants and stuff like that. That's sort of her business plan and what she wants to do. We're introduced to her sister who's a sous chef. She comes in, we learn a little bit more about her um, and all that sort of stuff. So there's some of the um, backstories and as I said, um, Denny was part of book 11 and he's in book 12 as well he's got a couple of chapters in this book um because he's working with jill on the farm and all the rest of it and we also find out who his father is because he's looking for his father um so basically colin and jill jill meet um he's painting in a um, paddock of hers and she comes through the bushes and asks him how he got there they become fast friends they end up having a hot and heavy relationship throughout the summer 
but it, they always knew that it was only going to be a temporary thing because she's not sure if she's staying in Virgin River and he is definitely wanting to move on. He wants to get back to flying and all that sort of stuff. So that just follows their story and, um, yeah, so they become fast friends and subsequently end up having a hot and heavy relationship and I'm going to leave it there because there's lots of other things that happen and if I say it, I'm going to spoil it for you. But I am looking forward to seeing where some of these other um, characters that have been talked about during the, the book. So um, there's a little bit of, uh, touches on a little bit of Alzheimer's in the book. One of the characters in the, in the series has um, got, she wasn't a main character, but she was a sub character of one of the books. And so she has Alzheimer's disease and um, how they sort of deal with that. It, they didn't touch a lot on it. It could have probably gone a little bit further because it is such a prevalent um, topic for a lot of people. And, um, yeah, so they could have, you know, touched on that a bit more. As I said, we find out who Denny's father is. I'm not saying any more. Um, we also touch on uh, Luke and Colin's sibling rivalry, their love-hate relationship for one another and how they um, overcome that. And, as I said, we meet um, Kelly who is Jill's sister, and we find a little bit more about her. So I'm guessing that some of these characters are going to be in the next book. All right, so that is all my series that I've done. Um, now, the other thing that I've been doing is the bingo challenge over in the group, and I have done three books for the bingo challenge in the last couple of weeks. So the first one was uh, that I read was Joy at Work by Marie Kondo and someone else, and I didn't write that down. But you know what? Blah, blah, blah. Same stuff. You know, just... I was hoping to get a little bit more out of it, but it, I mean, I could have just read the first chapter and been done with it. It is just basically about keeping, you know, your wherever you work, your area clean and tidy and organised, and then you will feel less stress. Yada yada yada. Same sort of thing as her, um, the magic of tidying book, but it's just for the office, so to speak. So. Eh. It wasn't that that fantastic. I'm glad I read it. I got some great ideas. It did motivate me a little bit to get out and organise some of my area. And I do feel a lot better when my area is clean, where I work and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, for that matter, it was pretty good. All right. the um, And that's where I'm going to leave it because <laughs> there wasn't much else to say. Um, yeah. Basically, keep your area clean, tidy and stay on top of it, you know. If you work in an office, go in a little bit earlier, clean up your area until you get it done and then, you know, make sure you tidy up before you go and then that way when you come into work the next day, it is, is clean. That, I mean, I'm really summarising it there. I, I just, I didn't get much from the book really. I know to keep my area clean, so yeah. Um, and as I said, to be honest, I could have just read the first chapter and been done with it. The other book that I read... Um, which I can't remember what the, the prompt was. Was it a short story? No. Oh, I'll read a book in a day. So this book is Stevenson um, Under the Palm Trees and it is by Alberto... Mm, I don't know his last name. I'm not even going to try it and pronounce it. It's M-A-N-G-Q-U-O-T. Manquat, I guess. Um, this was a physical book. This was one of the books that came in the book grocer boxes that I've been getting. Um, it's 105 pages and it was published in 2000, uh, the year 2000. So it's, um, you know, 21 years old. I don't really know what to say about the book except for, it was really weird. I was reading it and I thought, I am just not getting this. Am I missing something? I almost restarted it again. Um, it just, yeah. So it basically covers this story of a, um, a man named, his name's Stevenson, his last name's Stevenson. Um, he's dying of consumption, so it's sort of the last few days of his life or weeks of his life. Um, he's at, like, it was just really weird. <laughs> um, and I, I don't even know how to, like, it just done my head in to begin with. And so it's st the story begins where he's at a tribal dance, um, and he's a preacher man, so um, he's at a tribal dance, he's on the island of Samoa, and um, he sees this girl, and he's like, he's a taken back by her, he just finds her irresistible, and he can't take his eyes off her, and all that sort of stuff. Subsequently, she turns up dead, um, and then he is the chief um, suspect, because they find his hat near, um, near the body, and all that sort of stuff, and it's sort of just... 
goes on from there. Um, there was also a fire, and like I'm sounding very vague because I was a little bit vague when I was reading it. I think I just wasn't. It just didn't mesh with me. I'm glad I read it though because as the book went on, it sort of started to take. I sort of to, the penny dropped for me. I think, and basically. Um, as I said, I found it a little bit hard to follow, but after a couple of chapters, the penny dropped, and it was more like a Dr. Heck, a Jekyll and Mr. Hyde sort of thing. So there was Mr. Baker was in this story, and basically um, it's like, I, I can't say too much. If I say that, that's going to give it away. Um, if you get a chance, go to a library and see if you can borrow it. As I said, it's only got 105 pages in it, Although I did look it up on Kindle and it's still like $15 to buy it on Kindle. Um, I found it to be a little bit hard to get grasp the concept of it. But once I got the concept, which I think was like about chapter three, um, maybe even less than that. Like I don't even think, like, and the chapters aren't that long, but um, I think it was like maybe 10 or 15 pages I started to cotton on to what was going on but it was a little bit strange like I, I did get a little bit lost and all the rest of it but it turned out to be a really good book um even though it had 105 pages I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't more because I think the writer could have and I don't know who this writer is I have not read anything else of his his works or anything like that I haven't researched him or anything so I was a little bit disappointed that it ended up stopping at 105 pages I think it could have gone to at least 200 pages and it could have really been a really good developed story um but yeah I'm glad I read it and um as I said it came in one of the book grocer books so it was one that I didn't pick and I've got a feeling that I'm going to get a lot of this next year with some of the books that are in there because I'm not picking the books the book grocer is picking them I'm just getting the box and I'm reading those books so it's going to be a very interesting year next year for that um the other one that I read um for the um book challenge in the group was a um, a memoir and it was Kevin Hart's memoir um, I can't make this this up or you can't make that up um, it was a free book back in September I finally listened to it um, and it was a new genre to me so memoirs are a new genre to me I haven't read a lot of that stuff so it was good in that aspect that I was getting to to read um, something that I normally wouldn't read and oh my god if you have not read this book go read it um, like there's just so much into it <laughs> in one stage he was obviously reminiscing because he reads it and he's just started laughing about one of the things so um and it's not all comical either like there is a lot of you know his life his background how he got you know doing the hustle doing the grind and all that sort of stuff and and how he got to be where he is today and and how tough his parents were and um and his childhood was and all that sort of stuff really interesting guy um I'm not a I'm I'm not a huge fan of Kevin Hart, but after listening to his because uh, it was an audio book, after listening to his story, I have a lot more respect for him and where he's come from and all the rest of it, and just some of the pitfalls that he fell into when he was you know up and coming as a stand up comic and all that sort of stuff. So if you haven't read it, go and get it. It is a good book to read, like really fascinating about his life. Um, and I think that's it for the the challenge ones. Yes, it is. I'm just looking at my notes here. All right, so another book that I read, which was part of the, um, where is it? Part of my horror, um, classic horrors, was a Joe Hill book. Now, for those that don't know who Joe Hill is, he is Stephen King's son. Um, this was off the classic horror book, so I did a Google search and it brought up a whole heap of books, and then I just picked them, picked the books by their covers. No real reason why. This was published in 2013. It was on audio. It has 692 pages, so not a short book by any means. Um, and as I said, it's a classic horror. I gave it four stars because I was on the edge of my seat and I was so into this story. I was a little bit disappointed when it ended. So basically the two main characters are Vic McQueen or Victoria McQueen, AKA the brat. That's what her dad calls her. And also Charles, um, Manx. And, um, so basically Charles is the bad guy and, um, Vic Victoria is our, you know, our main character, the, the heroine of the, um, of the story so 
basically it starts off where um, Charles Manx is in a coma and there's a nurse and he twitches or does something, she freaks out and then it starts off with the story. So he owns a um, 1930s Rolls Royce um, Wraith and it has the number plates um, NOS F, oh, sorry, NOS4A2, which is Nosfo R2 or something, I don't know. Um, it's German for vampire or something along those lines. But anyway, um, I'm not even going to try, and um, Nos, Nosfo R2, I think it's pronounced, I'm not too, too sure. But anyway, it follows um, the story of these two characters. So basically... Um, as I said, Charles is the bad guy. Um, Victoria, it starts off when she's a little kid and her parents, um, and she has a special gift of being able to find things. And so she jumps on her, her like they're looking for this bracelet that was lost on after a day out and all the rest of it. And so she jumps on her bike and she goes to the shorter way bridge and, and all this sort of stuff. And subsequently she ends up finding the bracelet and bringing it home. Um, and then it sort of ju jumps to where her parents are getting di got divorced and all this sort of stuff and she not reacting to it very well as an adolescent. She goes out looking for trouble and she finds herself in the back of this Rolls Royce um, Wraith with, um, with Charlie or Charles. And so basically um, then she escapes from his clutches. I, I don't want to say too much because it will give away. Um, so she ends up escaping. He never forgets her. Subsequently, she, as I said, she escapes. She meets her um, future boyfriend, husband, uh, father of her child um, after escaping because he rescues her. And basically, he never forgot her. And um, the story just goes on from there. Subsequently, she meets other people that are like her another person like her and then that person comes to visit her and then subsequently the son gets taken and finds himself in the back of the rave and um, going off to Christmas land. There are other characters in it like her parents play a big part in it. There's Lou who is, is Victoria's husband or boyfriend, um, Maggie who is like her um, and then there is Bing who is like Charlie's offsider, Charles's offsider. So yeah, it goes on and it's just it is a um horror story because what he does, uh, Charles takes all these children away um to a place called Christmas Land. Christmas Land is not on any map. Um so you can you can get that it's um yeah they end up in this place by their ability so to speak I don't, if I say too much it gives it away and I don't want to give it away because you should read this book that's all I'm going to say you need to go and get this book so it is I don't know how to pronounce it and I don't think Google will know how to pronounce it either so it is N-O-S-4 the number 4 A and the number 2 um yeah, it's it's a really good book. I really enjoyed it. It kept me on the edge of the seat. I didn't want to stop reading, like listening to it, because I listened to it on audio. Um, it's the first time I've read anything of Joe Hills as well, um, so I'm actually really looking forward to reading some more of his stuff. Um, if you've got any recommendations of his stuff, by all means, drop it in the the uh, comments down below, because I'd be very interested to read more of his stuff. Um, I do like Stephen King, but, uh, and they are very, um, horror based books, I guess. I don't know if all these, all these books are horror because as I said, I've done my research. It was the first time I've read anything of his. I didn't even realize when I picked it that it was, it was Stephen King's son. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but they do both have very, like the apple has not fallen far from the tree. That's all I can say. All right, so I'm just going to take a sip of my drink. The next one I read. Now, this one I started in the truck with Brendan a couple of months ago. It's called Law, and it's by Alexandra um, Bracken. It's 551 pages. It was published in 2021. It, the genre is fantasy, and this was both audio and physical because I actually had the physical book, and um, I started listening to it in the truck. So... Um, I didn't really get into it in the truck, but again, I think that's because Brennan keeps pausing the books, like I start to get into it and then he pauses it. 
to have a bit of a chat or the phone rings or stuff like that. So I think that's why I didn't really get into it because it was one that you really need to concentrate on. So the basically it follows the story of Law or Melora um, and um, the book is like Greek mythology based so it's got the Greek gods and goddesses um, mentioned throughout of it um, and so basically the the premise of the book is that the um, every seven years the Argon begins so what that is is where the nine gods are f um, it's part of their from their rebellious past and basically the nine Greek gods are forced to walk the earth as mortals so and then they're hunted by ancient bloodlines um, uh, descendants of Asian bloodlines and basically that person that killed the whichever hunter kills them actually um, uh, seizes their power and gets immortality so that's the premise of the Argon so that's what's happening there it is fa a fantasy um, it's not a fantasy world as such but it is fantasy genre so basically um, they're hunted by the hunt, what they call the hunters, um, and Law has like she has fled away from this world. She didn't want anything to do with it. She found it very brutal and all the rest of it. Um, and she came to this conclusion after the murder of her family. Now her family was murdered. Um, so she finds out who murdered her family in the book and all that sort of stuff. You don't know until towards the end, and I'm not going to say because I don't want to give it away. Um, so. Um, she's Law, her name is Melora, um, but she goes by the name of Law in the book. So Law Perseus is her name. Um, and as I said, she fled after her, her family were brutally murdered. And subsequently, the story sort of picks up where she's doing like, um, I guess like bar fights, but like in the, in the basement um, and stuff like that. And then all these other characters come into it that she has known throughout her life and all the rest of it. She aligns herself with Athena and um, she has an alliance with her. Um, so basically she she says that um, the, the alliance is that they have to stay alive. If Athena dies, then Law will die as well. If Law dies, then Athena dies. So they're subsequently trying to keep each other alive. Um, well, that's sort of how it sort of starts with their, their alliance and all the rest of it. And then the, the story just builds from there. And basically, it just goes through um, like a survival of the fittest sort of thing. And um, it's not even really like that. It's hard to explain without giving stuff away. This is really hard. <laughs> um, so anyway, it is a really good book. I really enjoyed it. But as I said, when I first started listening to it, I didn't get into it. But I think, as I said, I think that was because Brendan kept stopping and starting, and we were getting a lot of phone calls while we were um, while we were driving along. And I couldn't put it down. I just I ended up flying through that book. I just thought it was an absolutely fabulous book, and um, I. Um, I can highly recommend it to everybody. Um, but it's, what's funny about it is the author actually has two series on either side of this book. So um, I don't know if it's either side, but she has two series. And this one's not part of a series that I'm aware of. So I couldn't find any other books in, in that had anything to do with it. And the last book that I'm going to talk about um, today is one from our bingo. Uh, this one was... Um, the, the prompt was to read a book with a blue cover so I was just flicking through books to try and find one with a blue cover and I found A Curse So Dark and Lonely. It is book number one in a trilogy of the Curse, Curse Breakers. Uh, there's 484 pages in this one. It was published in 2019. The genre is fantasy although it doesn't have a huge building, world building or anything like that in it. I listened to this one and also have the physical book um, so we start off in DC with a character named um, our heroine um, uh, Harper. She's waiting for her brother to come back from some sort of job. Her father has caused them a lot of grief. Her mother is dying. She has cerebral palsy. Um, and so she is being like a bit of a lookout. She's waiting for her brother to come back and, and all the rest of it. So while this is happening, she sees a man walking along the street with a, a drunk girl and all the rest of it, and she got an uneasy feeling, and then subsequently she went and attacked him, and before she knew it, she was in a place called, she was taken, um, or kidnapped, 
<laughs> to a place called Emberfall. Now, Emberfall was, uh, is under a curse. Uh, Lilith, the Enchantress, has put a powerful curse on Prince Wren. Um, and uh, to repeat Autumn um, over and over again until um, someone falls for him, like he finds love or whatever, um, to break the curse. So basically he's in his 18th year, um, the, the guy that brought Harper to it, he's also, he, he's a guard for the prince, and so he is doomed to repeat the autumn over and over again as well. So, um, it was a very easy book to read, um, I guess it's young adult, uh, I would call it young adult, and, um, I found it very easy to read, um, I was flying through it, I couldn't put it down, um. I'm not going to comment on anybody's writing or anything like that because I do believe that that is so much up to the individual. Some people will gel with it, some people won't. Um, I found it to be an awesome book. I even came out and held it up to Savannah because she doesn't have it on her bookshelf and I said, "You want this is a good book if you want something easy to read. Um, I'm super excited. to. I wanted to start the other books <laughs> straight away but I've got other things that I've got to read first. Um because I do like to do that if I start a series. I like to just finish the series because then it's done and dusted. So I may end up just reading those two books next week. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Um, I only just finished this um, on Friday. So this was, as I said, it was part of the, the group's bingo that we're doing. Um, I know I'm a quilting and crafting um, group, but there is a few people that are joining along with it and are really enjoying it. And there's a couple other people that have said that, oh, this is a great idea. I'll know what I'm getting for Christmas. Um, and, yeah, and they're going to, they wanted to know if the other things are being done and, and all the rest of it. So, yeah. So, basically, it just follows the story. It's a little bit reminiscent of Beauty and the Beast, but way better because, you know, the princess isn't perfect. <laughs> and, you know, it's not a perfect story. Um, so, yeah. So, he uh, – Ren is the main character along with Grey, um, who is the guard, and uh, Harper is the female uh, main character. And Lilith is the enchantress, and she's the one that's caused the curse, and she torments um, Ren. And the reason um, that – I'll give you the reason why he was cursed, because he spent the night with um, Lilith and didn't want it to go any further. There is a bit of a twist in the story towards the end, which will help follow on to book two and three, I assume. I absolutely love this book. As I said, I am super excited and I cannot wait to read the other two books. So I'm hoping that I can get through all the books that are in my Goodreads to read this week and then I can start on them next week. And I will be, before I know it, I will be at my 100. So as I said, I'm, I'm reading um, book 91 and 92 at the moment. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope that you enjoyed watching me uh, stitch this and talking about the uh, books that I've read in the last few weeks. I'm going to continue on doing this and hopefully have it finished by the end of the week. Um, yeah, maybe not. You might see it next week again, but who knows? All right. Well, that is it from me today. As I said, uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up down below. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. And then that way you won't miss out on any future posts. And I will see you all again next week for another stitch with me. Bye for now.